What is going on guys, JFC here today. I'm going to be talking about five things that I think can instantly help you become a better FIFA player. I tried to pick five things that can kind of fit in like any skill bracket. So it doesn't really matter what rank you finish or where you are in FUD champs, division rivals, etc. I think these tips are gonna help you no matter what. They have definitely helped me get better at FIFA over the years that I have been implementing them into my game. But then without further ado, let's just begin. The number one thing, it's not really in any order, but I think this is probably the biggest one, honestly, is mentality. Mentality when it comes to FIFA is way more important than you realize and that can come to just keeping your composure in high pressure situations or not staying angry at the game for very long, not getting annoyed with all the little things going against you. When you play a game of FIFA, yes, things are going to go against you. Like that is going to happen. There's no doubt about it. The question is, can you stay calm through it all? That's a lot easier said than done. Playing FIFA for many years now, I used to get very upset at the game. I think like FIFA 17, 18, 19-ish, somewhere around there, I tried to get better at that. And then my results have really drastically improved. I used to be just kind of like, you know, a standard okay FUT Champs player. Now I can count on like usually a rank three-ish finish in FUT Champs. And obviously like, is FUT Champs the biggest um, barometer for skill ever? Not really but it shows a little bit of an improvement in FIFA. And I like to think that a lot of that is because of mentality. And I've been able to try my best to stay as calm as possible while playing FIFA. No matter how toxic the opponent, just try your best to uh, ignore it all. I know that can be very difficult. And, re and remember, you are never out of a game. You're never out, no matter what the score line is. Let me show you one example. Why is he on the ground? All right, sick. He's got him. Oh God, man. He's got R9, dude, and he's pausing for me. <clears throat> okay, well now I'm definitely not backing out. I don't care what the score is in this game. I am not leaving. Nice finish. off he's not <laughs> oh man so try to pick things that happened literally this weekend and like just in a few games to kind of show you guys that these things can like instantly improve your game really this was just like my i think game like 18 of fudge champ something something like that this guy was very good and i ended up you know he was just like total rat right mbappe ben yetter alloway ron attack like exactly who you would expect to have in a high-end weekend league game um this guy had it, and i went down like i think three nil in 16 minutes like you can see there i was like oh god like this is gonna be rough but i tried my best to stay as calm as possible and just keep chipping away right one goal at a time is what you got what your mentality's got to be but made it 3-1 and then he ended up making it 4-1 look at that goal by the way that is the most mbappe angle goal you've ever seen so i was like oh god this is gonna be a sweat fest but just kept trying to stay as cool as possible and uh are you gonna come back every single time if you stay calm no but you are gonna give yourself potentially a couple more wins every weekend because you can just stay um as ready as possible for a comeback that pele finish is insane all of a sudden it's four three and uh just two minutes later we're down the attack it's alloway on time pele across four four and now just like usually your opponent at this point when it goes from 4-1 to 4-4 is going to be just pissed right so if you can keep that mentality you're going to have like a huge advantage over him now he ended up making a 5-4 which i moved nick pope there and it just like what's the point in moving a keeper in this game there's no point i wish i wasn't even in the game in the first place but then go to extra time uh get a little bit lucky here with the rebound but that's gonna happen sometimes you have to create your own luck 6-5 now and then just get a little cut back and right around the little slide tackle seven five he ends up back and now he's pissed it was four one in like the 30th minute and then just like that it's game over and you gotta win when it was against a good player you're down three nil then four one then he equalizes at five five like it's a crazy game but you just gotta keep your head as much as possible i'm still not perfect at it by any means 
but the more you can do that the better your results are probably going to be the number two thing that i think can really help you guys um immediately really get better at fifa is watching your games back no matter what console you're on i think they have a built-in capture card right ps4 ps5 xbox one and the new xbox which i don't even know the name of i'm a complete cash but watching games back can be a huge help to you and your game because like right here watch this play I shoot with Pele there. Let's go back. You can probably see instantly where the problem lies here. I get this ball with Pele, and look at the wide open Harold Kane right here, ready for the sweat. And the goalkeeper's way back here, so I can actually still triangle this too. I can X, I can triangle this, I can do whatever, I could square this, I can do whatever pass I want to here and probably score this goal. Instead, I'm on a decent shot angle with Pele. Like, this is not a bad shot. It's really not a bad shot, but the, I just, obviously, it's, this is probably a 99.9% .9 chance of scoring. This is like a 50-50. And what ends up happening is I shoot with Pele, and he saves it. And then just like that, this is 2-0 scoreline here. This would have made it 3-0. He probably backs out. You know, that's that's the difference between a, a guaranteed win and now, you know, 2-0. That, you can come back from 2-0. So, so watching games back can be a huge help. There's another one, too. Dribbling down with Harry Kane. Pele, the goalkeeper's kind of running out at me. And look at Zidane right here. He ends up getting a touch. The goalkeeper does and the ball. Because bringing the goalkeeper out is insanely OP, by the way. But look at Zidane. He's just standing here wide open. He's standing here wide open this entire time. Should have passed it. Would have scored. But in my head, I just never saw it. I was trying to beat the goalkeeper. And should have passed it to Zidane. These are the kinds of things you'll pick up on when you watch your games back. And then you can just attribute that as best you can to actually playing. And it's just like watching film in any sport, right? Same concept applies. Let's just go back here because... uh. If you watch this whole clip through, I like should pretty much easily tackle this guy, right? Watch this Van Dyke tackle. I press uh, circle and he just completely whiffs and I end up conceding. But the problem is here, what actually happened was for him to get this chance in the first place. Um, what I shouldn't have done here, watch me. I'm defending with my midfielders here. I have Clarence Seedorf. This is who I'm controlling right here. He's got Volair. I end up second man pressing here. And this is what I should not have done. Those are from the beginning again here. Volair, I think it's Davies on the left. Uh, second man press. Oops, Davies is wide open. So for this to even happen in the first place, I have to make a mistake. So I made that mistake. Should have second man pressed there. Yes, I tackle Van Dyke. Should I get the ball? Absolutely. But sometimes you end up creating your own luck. And in this case, it was pretty much my fault that this happened at all so when you're playing the game you might say to yourself oh god i conceded a bullshit goal when it's like yeah you kind of did but also for him to get to that point you also made a mistake to get there are you going to concede bullshit goals that had nothing to do with you you 100 are but then when you watch back you'll know that you couldn't have done anything better there when you will watch some back and realize and thought they were bullshit real time and you will realize that like oh i could have done this better so watching games back in my opinion is vital if you really want to try and get better at fifa for any skill level it's going to be huge for you to try and get better this clip now leads us into our number three and that is do what works for you one of the most important things i've found in fifa is you need to use the tactics instructions players formations that suit your gameplay. If you're a possession player, a long ball player, counter attack, pace whore, if you like to build up, don't really care about pace. You need to do whatever works for you and not conform to what everyone else is using. For whatever reason for me, I've always liked bigger strikers. So look at like Harry Kane here, you know, I'm using Harry Kane in a weekend. Like I went 17 and three this past weekend with Harry Kane in my team. And I like Harry Kane obviously is definitely usable 100%, but I think most people would just like not be able to use that card. It just works for me. I don't know what it is. It's just the way I play. For me personally, one of the best formations that I use every single year is the four triple two. And what I also do is I put my cams on free roam. This is something that you probably will never see other people do. Honestly, you probably never will see it, but it just works for me. And if I conformed to every single other like custom tactics video out there, there, I probably would have never done this in the first place. Try and find what works for you. If you watch a custom tactics video and that works for you, that's great, right? Like it's useful to still watch custom tactics videos to try and pick up on stuff that might work for you. But don't copy exactly a custom tactics video and expect to see better results immediately because you don't know what exactly is going to work for you and what's not going to. Camera angles too can be a big part of that. I've used a couple camera angles this year. Tele broadcast height 20 zoom zero. That's this one here. This one's good if you are a good dribbler. It helps you a lot with those like concise dribbles and that kind of thing. The other camera angle I've used this year is co-op, just basic co-op. And I'm trying to still figure out which one I like better. I still don't know, honestly, but it's good to play around until you figure out which one you like best. You you, you might not know. You might like the classic one from like FIFA 15, 16. You might like the broadcast one for all I know, man. I don't know. It just you just need to do what works best for you 
because yes, I think that a certain camera angle is probably gonna be the best in the game for most people, but it's not gonna be that way for everybody. So you need to find what works best for you. The number four tip that I can give is actually a little bit of a gameplay tip. That's be light on the sprint button. This is probably the most important gameplay tip. The second game, most important gameplay tip is probably coming after this. But the most important gameplay tip I can give you is being light on the sprint button. This will like change your game if you're at any skill level. The more you can figure out what time to use the sprint button effectively i think in my opinion the better you're going to be if you watch this clip of mateus here i have all the space right look at all this in front of me i could sprint into it i could try and sprint into it maybe lead uh whoever this is here on a through ball i think that's sadorf i think uh, I could lead him. I could try and sprint into here. Hopefully he comes here and lead Pele on a through ball or Neymar over here. But instead, he's giving me all the space. I'm just going to take it, but slowly. Pause. Look, let's go 0.5 speed here. He's giving me all the space, but he's not really switching to anybody, right? He's just kind of staying in his defender. I'm just going to wait for him to make a move. I can pass, pass to Sador there if I wanted to, but I see he's going to read that. And I just make a little dribble around him, do one sprint touch, and I'm just like through and on goal. And all I had to do there was not sprint. If you don't sprint, you just kind of let your opportunities arise. And people that are defending also don't expect it really. And there's another one, LOA Ron has space in front of him. I'm just not sprinting. Then I end up with Harry Kane wide open and I'm shooting a little finesse shot with a goal. This is a thing that I've noticed when I'm like in a rut and I'm playing FIFA and I like can't figure out why I'm not attacking and I can't score. One of the things is that I'm probably sprinting too much. A lot of FIFA comes down to trying to be, to be as unpredictable as possible, right? If you're sprinting a lot, oftentimes you can be very predictable. So whenever I'm in a rut, I'm always like, okay, what am I doing wrong? And I end up just like, take a deep breath, stop sprinting. Usually that ends up being the case. And usually also that goes hand in hand with just like getting angry at the game or you being frustrated. You end up just trying to sprint and do too much too quickly. So take it easy and that will really help you a lot in your gameplay. The last piece of advice that I can give you guys is have fun. That's number five. And I know it sounds like dumb, cliche, like what does that even mean? Uh, how does that help me with gameplay at all? But my correlation to having fun in FIFA and doing well is like one to one. Honestly, if I like don't want to play over the weekend, I'm not going to play. If I don't want to play weekend league, I'm not going to play a weekend league. I'm not going to have FOMO and have fear of missing out. If you don't know what that means, it's fear of missing out. Um, and I, I'll pass on rewards for a week. If I'm not going to have fun, if I don't want to play FIFA, I'm not going to play it. That's a big thing that people kind of like sleep on a little bit is if you don't want to play the gameplay of FIFA, do something else. You know, if you want to play FIFA, do some league SBCs, do some other things that you can grind and just take it easy. When you're playing FIFA and you want to play FIFA, you are way better at the game. That is just the truth. Using players you might want to use that you like in real life or just like in FIFA is, is way more beneficial than you realize in terms of your actual gameplay and how you do in it. Like I was saying before, I actually really like Harry Kane in FIFA. I don't know what it is, but I just like the fact that he is big. And uh, just like tall strikers in FIFA tend to, I really like. And for whatever reason, that's just how I've been for the last few years. Could I use an, uh, you know, Mbappe instead of him and get an extra win or two a weekend league? I 100% could. But at the expense of my fun, absolutely not. I'm not going to do that. So just stick with what you enjoy. Have fun. That's the most important thing about a video game, right? You want to have fun. So I think that is going to be my five tips that you can kind of instantly apply and get better at the game. If any of these tips help you guys, please let me know in the comments. What are your guys' tips that you can kind of like instantly apply and get better at the game with? I'd love to hear because I, of course, I'm not the perfect FIFA player by any means. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say of course i love all of you i'll see you next video very very soon peace